<laughs> Hello there. Welcome to Invention Highway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hall of Thinking. I'm glad you're here. With the help of the Invention Highway method, you'll be inspired to expand your creativity and encouraged to solve problems in a more creative way. Click here if you want an explanation of the Invention Highway method. Click here to play the Invention Highway games. Click on this suitcase to reload the game and to control the volume of the game. You can also choose the level of difficulty from here. Click on the Earth button to connect to the Internet. If you want to quit, just click on the door. Click on the Learning Chapters button to find out more about the Invention Highway method. Or click on any of the Technique buttons to get an explanation. I'd like to introduce you to the basics of the Invention Highway method. It has been found that creative thinking is very important in problem solving. So, let's start by trying to define creativity. Well, what is creativity? Many researchers have analyzed this subject, and almost every one of them have come up with a different definition. However, we can identify three main approaches in defining creativity. The first approach is to try to analyze creative people. What categorizes these people and what motivates them? How were they influenced and what triggers their creativity? The second approach analyzes the process of creative thinking. What takes place in the mind when one is dealing with a problem and finally arrives at what is considered to be a creative solution? The third approach investigates the results or the creative solution itself to try to understand what characterizes creativity. This is the approach that the invention highway method is based upon. Would you like to know more about the results based on creative solutions? Hello out there! Did you hear me? <clears throat> now where was I? Oh yes, I was talking about results based on creative solutions. Creative results have two main characteristics. Firstly, the results are original, which means that few people have thought about them. And secondly, the results solve the problem perfectly, inexpensively, and without any negative side effects. Researchers who analyzed various creative solutions were surprised to find characteristics common to many of the solutions. Intensive research examining those common characteristics led us to develop the Invention Highway Method. Let's look at a few examples of original creative solutions from different fields and try to see what is unique about them. To send a missile into space, we need to overcome the problem of gravity. In order to do this, we need to create a missile that moves at a very high speed. The weight of the first missile created was very heavy because of the need to carry large amounts of fuel. It was therefore not possible to get to the speed required to launch the missile into space. A breakthrough was made when scientists came up with the idea of the multi-stage missile. 
The multi-stage missile is made up of a number of sub-missiles that are a collection of small fuel tanks connected to each other. Each sub-missile falls away as its fuel tank is emptied and its task completed, and this reduces the weight of the main missile. In this way, the main missile can be launched into space at a relatively light weight. Another example of a creative solution is the vaccination against polio, which was discovered by the scientist Jonas Salk. Salk came upon the idea of vaccinating against the polio disease using weakened polio viruses. His unique idea has almost eradicated this horrible disease. Would you like another example? In World War II, Russian aircraft engineers were concerned about explosives hitting the fuel tanks of their aircrafts. A strike like this would have caused the fuel tanks to ignite and the aircrafts would almost certainly have exploded. The engineers then thought of a brilliant idea. As you know, oxygen assists in igniting a fire. So, to prevent this from happening, the engineers inserted the exhaust fumes from the aircrafts into the fuel tanks of the aircrafts. These gases forced the oxygen out of the fuel tanks and minimized the danger of an explosion. Yet another example of a creative mind is that of the artist Yakova Gam. He developed a method of painting pictures that look different when viewed from different angles. This idea is based on folding the paper like an accordion and painting differently on each fold. All four ideas described here were considered unique and untried. It has to be agreed that these are creative solutions. Now, let's see if all four of these ideas have something in common. If we look closely, we'll find something surprising. In all of these inventions, the inventor used the things that already existed in the problem itself. Nothing new was brought in to solve the problem. Multi-stage missiles contain the same components as individual missiles. Salk used the viruses themselves to find a vaccination against polio. The actual fumes from the Russian aircrafts were used to minimize the danger of an explosion. In Agam's creation, there is a change in the shape of the paper, but there are no new components involved. This is the principle of the closed world. According to the principle of the closed world, we solve the problem by using only the components that already exist in the problem itself. The idea of the closed world, however, sometimes raises doubts. People ask, how can one be creative and break conventions when the solution to the problem is limited to using only the components that already exist in the problem? The answer is, when we have boundaries, we need to be creative in order to work within those boundaries. As we say, necessity is the mother of invention. Finding a solution within the boundaries of the closed world is what breaks the conventions. It seems obvious that a missile is one unit that cannot be divided up. It seems obvious that the polio virus is considered to be the problem and not the solution. 
It seems obvious that the gas fumes from the aircrafts are waste products from the engine that have no use. And it seems obvious that a picture is a picture, and that the angle from which it is viewed is of no consequence. However, the principle of the closed world encourages us to solve the problem by viewing the components of the problem in a new light. According to the principle of the closed world, nothing is obvious or should be taken for granted. Now that we know about the principle of the closed world, let's take a look at the techniques in the invention highway method. There are four creative thinking techniques to assist us in finding a solution that exists within the principle of the closed world. These techniques are unification, multiplication, division, and breaking unity. Let's take a look at the unification technique. Using the unification technique, we solve a problem by using a certain thing in a different way from which it was designed to be used. This fork is usually used for eating, but it can also be used to comb my hair. Oh no! Our monster is in trouble! Water has flooded the area and he's not a very good swimmer. Let's try to think of a way to solve the monster's problem. Did you see that? Ha! The umbrella that is usually used as protection from the rain was used by the monster as a boat. Now, Regarding the problem with the Russian fuel tanks, the fumes were considered to be a waste product, and even something that was not good for the system. Using the unification technique, the fumes were used for a different purpose, a positive and useful one. The fumes forced the oxygen out of the fuel tanks to prevent an explosion of the tanks and the aircrafts. The second technique is the technique of multiplication. The multiplication technique allows us to solve problems by adding another component of the same kind as the one that already exists. Let me show you an example. Once again we have a problem. The monster won't allow us to pass. Can you think of a way to get past the monster? Well, we use the multiplication technique. We duplicate the monster and then use the duplicated monster to get past the original monster. Ha! When using the multiplication technique, it's important to remember that the duplicated components are usually not identical to the original components. The idea of vaccinating against polio uses the multiplication technique. Salk used the weakened polio viruses to fight the polio disease. The third technique is the division technique. Usually, when we look at something that is made up of a few parts, our brain sees it as one whole thing. The brain does this to make it easy on the memory. The division technique teaches us to look at the separate parts of the whole. Sometimes, by looking at the separate parts, 
we may get an idea about how to solve the problem. Let's take our monster as an example. The monster is in trouble again. It's trapped. What do you think it should do? <coughs> well, our monster has one characteristic that is similar to that of a lizard. The person who caught the monster thought he caught the whole thing. But the monster knows the division technique and uses it to escape from danger by separating itself from its tail, like a lizard, yeah? The multi-staged missiles are an example of the division technique. Instead of one missile being made up of only one part, the division technique allows us to break the missile up into smaller parts. By doing this, we decrease its weight and enable it to reach space. The importance of the division technique is that we are encouraged to pay attention to the parts of the whole and to become aware of the possibility of organizing them in a different way. The fourth technique is the breaking unity technique. We usually look at the components of a problem in a unified or equal manner. But the breaking unity technique helps us to solve the problem by treating the components differently. Sounds complicated? You'll see that it isn't complicated at all! Let's look at an example. Our monster wants to play a tune on the glasses of water. But all the glasses make the same sound. How will it handle the problem? Let's see. <laughs> By using the breaking unity technique, a different amount of liquid is put into each glass so that each glass makes a different sound. In this way, our monster can create a melody from the glasses of liquid. The artist Yakov Agam also used a breaking unity technique in his creation. Agam showed that the unity of the picture could be broken by folding the paper like an accordion and creating a picture that looks different when viewed from different angles of perspective. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite you to play the thinking games. Let's see how you handle the problems that I'll introduce here. Remember the techniques? In each game, a different technique will be used. Good luck! Oh, wait a minute! Just one more thing! Don't be afraid! You're not alone! I'll be with you! If you have any difficulties, I'll give you clues on how to solve the problems. <laughs>